everybody, it's Kat from Creative Crafts and today's DIY is, is all about renovating this table to look a little bit more um, classy. You want to know how it is? Watch further. So first what I want to say is I made a video on how you can make your own um, computer table while some place where you can just put a laptop or a small computer, something small where you just need it to do your writings or just working on the computer only. Well, I made this video a long time ago about this table and what happened was I put this one here, the small piece, and I stained it with um, shoe polish, as you can see. But uh, for some reason, because of how thin the wood was, it was starting to, uh, you know, make it go like this, this area, you know, in the middle. So then I decided I should get a thicker piece of wood and I glued and um, nailed it together from underneath everything and screwed it. So now what I'm doing is um, I'm going to be adding this frame to it to the sides here which will make it look so more classier so and it's very easy to do the things you're going to need for this project is a thingy here I forgot what you don't remember what you call it but it's something where you could put your wood pieces inside and to make it so that when I put the two pieces of wood here together, they connect like this together. Not that they're flush like that. I don't want that because it won't look good. I'm going to have it, you know, so that the wood goes out, the sides go out a little, and then connects to the other one on this side. So that's what we're going to be doing. So the things you're going to need are this one of these things. Usually they come in different kinds. They come in steel, um... They come in a uh, plastic. I got a plastic one because I, I just need short projects like what I'm doing right now. You need a hand saw. It doesn't matter what size. So it's very old. I bought it a long time ago, and I left it in the basement, and it got wet. But it still works, so it doesn't matter. It still works. So you need this. These are the three things you're gonna need to exchange this normal looking table into something elegant. The other items you're gonna be needing is the color of the paint you wanna do it. Um, this table is staying in my bedroom because it's gonna match with the chair that I renovated. As you can see, check that video out on my YouTube channel. And I'm gonna need a course, you know, a primer and then the actual paint, which I got a glossy paint, which has a nice little gloss to it. And then after that, I will definitely spray it down with a clear varnish so that it protects the paint from scuffs or when you want to move things around on top. Like I have a laptop, so if I want to move it back and forth or it's too far or close, or too, you don't want to worry about scuffing the paint. So always make sure you get something that you can put over the paint that protects it from getting scuffed. Of course, when you first paint the table, it's going to take, in my opinion, at least a week before you can um, put anything on top because the paint is still needs to cure and sit for a while before it becomes you know, nice and hard so that you don't have to worry about it scuffing. Uh, yeah, basically, that's it. And what we're gonna need also is I have a staple gun here, which also works with um, nails. So I'm going to be nailing this and not just nailing, I'm going to be also gluing it. So those are the few other things you're going to need. If you don't want to, you don't have to use it, the glue, but I'm going to use some wood glue, which I'm going to, once I cut it, I'm going to put some glue on it and then I'm going to nail it with the, the gun. You can use normal nails, 
Just make sure you get the kind that are for dowels or stuff like this for, for the rims because you do not want to use too much of a thick nail because if you do, what will happen is because you're using real wood, it will crack it and it won't look good once the, the these things here crack, this part here. You don't want that. So now I'm going to um, prepare myself to measure you need to measure exactly the size that you need here is 80 centimeters wide and um, from the wall to this side is only 60 so now I'm gonna have to measure that and could put it in here and then cut and I can show you the very first piece what it's supposed to look like So as you can see here, I'm cutting it upwards, not like this. I'm cutting it like this because um, it's going to be sitting across like this. So you need to cut it in the angle that you need. So the angle I need is it has to be sticking out here on this side. So that means I got to cut from this side, not this way, but this way. So now I'm just going to cut first the end because the end that I need has to be here first. I don't want to waste any wood. So now what I'm going to do is, what you do is you take your saw and what I do is I usually just start like cutting slowly in it. Usually it's pretty hard when you're working with your left hand. Let's see if I can switch my hands here. didn't want to be in the camera, but I need my right hand. So now I gotta, whoops, now that I got it started, I wanna make sure my hands are not near the sawing. Stick this cut in. So. what I'm talking about what you do here it would be better if maybe if I just screwed this into the table but I don't want to ruin my table so I have to use my strength for that so now I will cut through this and I will show you when I'm done what it looks like so everybody as you can see this is what it looks like and what it's gonna look like here it's gonna look like that you see how it's sticking out over here? This is what you want to do. And you want to do it on the other end of it too. So that you can have the wood from here connecting here too. And it'll look much more neater. So I measured it. I made my mark. And where I need to cut it, you want to have it flush with the other end. So that end is going like this, you know, and you have to go this end going like this. And the size that I need is from the inside. And the inside is where that starts. So instead of cutting on this side, now I will cut on that side. So... finish cutting this all the way through and then we go to the next step so everybody I cut the two ends once for here 
and then one for here as you can see it's perfectly flush within each other here so now what i want to do is i'm going to do the other end and then the next step is gluing and nailing so everybody what i'm doing here now is i'm taking the biggest part which goes in the front and now i'm going to be sticking wood glue to help that the glue not the glue but helps the wood piece stick to this area better so the next thing i will do is need to plug in my gun here make sure that it's not facing anybody <laughs> be very careful when you're using this kind of thing because um, it can be very dangerous so what I would just suggest is I'm going to use a chair and first things first is you're going to debate which side do you want to have, how it is, how you cut it, make sure you put it on correctly. And then you add it on to the area that you want. And what I will do is take my gun here. Make sure that it's in. And then it may be sticking out a little bit, but if I was you, I would just take the hammer, put a cloth over it and take the hammer and make sure you when you're using these kind of nails, I do suggest that you, 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 when you put it in, you put pressure on it. If you don't put pressure on it and hold it tight, the nail is not going to go all the way in. It's going to stick out a little bit. So that's one suggestion. So now that I did that, now I'm going to take the piece, double check, that's, yeah, that's this side here. And now I want to put the glue and then stick that piece on flush. Make sure that it's perfect against these two corners. And then what I wanna do is I'm gonna stick some glue in between here and here and make sure that it covers any kind of extra pieces that are here. So I'm all opening. So that's what's gonna be next. Hi everybody. So here I am, and like I said, make sure you put it correctly on. That's why I should put some glue here too, so we know that it's sticking well. And make sure that it's totally flush against to where it's supposed to be. And then, like I said, you have to make sure you put pressure or it's not going to stick like you want it to. So now that I have this flush, I'm going to stick, like I said, in the gaps area, I'm going to stick some of this glue. I'm going to let it sit for about 24 hours so we can let it um, stick very well. And... Then we can finish the rest. So there we go. I got that. Now we're going to do the other side. Then I'm done with putting, well, the back. I decide not to put anything on the back because no one's going to see it anyway. But if I want to sell the table and as something nice, then I would suggest that um, you do the back and make sure it's perfect. But right now I'm just doing the areas for my table. So now that it's done, this done, do the other side and then wait until it dries. And then you have to, we have to sand, excuse me, have to sand everything down and then we can go to the next step. 
So everybody, what you see here is the leftover of um, the sawdust that I, when I cut the wood, the leftover from it. And my father, when he used to work, do work woodworking down in the basement when I was younger, he always said to take use, save that sawdust. Because what you could do is if you have like a hole in a wood piece that you made and you didn't need it and it was a wrong hole, you can fill it with uh, wood glue and sawdust mixed together, pack that in that hole really well and fill it up to the rim. And then when you sand it, it'll, it'll, it'll look like pieces of the table, I mean, once you paint it. Um, if you don't paint it, you will of course see it. But like I said, if you wanna level something out or fill up holes, I suggest that you take um, the sawdust, mix it with wood glue, and make a paste out of it, if you will. Um, put more sawdust than anything. Make it almost like a clay, if you can, with the glue. I just dusted it on top of some areas where I see, because the table is a little bit uneven. And it's not so uneven that, I'll, that I couldn't do anything about it. I can sand it down and it would be totally flush with each other. It was just so minimal, but I just wanted to make it so that when I do sand it, as you can see here, some areas, but the rest, um, like I said, if it, I like to recycle, so I'm just gonna try to follow what my father says. This area was perfect, so I'm just gonna let that dry, like I said before. And now I'm gonna wait a couple of hours, and yeah, then we'll see uh, the next step is, which is Sandy. So the next step, everybody, is I'm going to sand all of this down. As you can see, I already started. In areas that feel that you need a little bit more, I will do that. For a quick tip, what I decided to do is the measuring stick that you have, what you could do is wrap the sandpaper on it, and then you can put more pressure on it than just using your hand, and you know that it is straight, that it's not curved or anything. And this is, this is what I can just tell you what I can suggest that you do and some areas that may have feel like they have a lift what you could do is just keep sanding it with the sandpaper until you have it totally smooth all areas make sure it's all smooth I'm going to smooth this areas these corners both sides and then once it's totally smooth you can wipe it down clear off all the sawdust that's left over there and wipe it down with a damp cloth, let it dry. And then we go to the, the next step, which is doing the primer, or if you wanna stain it, you can stain it. But I'm going to be painting it white, so I have to first put a primer on it, and then I will put the white paint. So let's do this, I'm gonna sand this all down, and when I'm done, I will show you what it looks like, and then we can do that, the next step, which is the painting. Hi everybody, I just finished sanding this down. As you can see how nice and smooth it is. Um, the reason why I wanted to fill in this, these between the, the wood and the dowel that I put there, the frame, is because when I paint it, I don't wanna have gaps. I want it to have a smooth paint top from here, you know, from these both ends, not just from where I connected this thing to. So now that these gaps are all filled in now, and it's nice and smooth as you can see, perfectly smooth, now I can do the priming. I just wanted to explain to you why I, people was like, well, why didn't you just uh, paint it? Well, if you just paint it and you don't fill in these grooves, when you're done painting, there'll be like an indent. And I didn't want that. I wanted the table to be completely smooth around the whole thing. So that's the reason why I filled in these gaps. And it looks better too. So then I just wanted to let you know about that. Same goes for this gap here. You know, um, there was one, now there isn't. So and I wanted to make sure there wasn't any. So that's how you can fill in gaps. And now the next step is priming it. Cause I just sanded it down and then after I sanded it down, I wiped it down with a damp cloth and now it's not all ready to do the primer. And if you want to know what primer paint is, primer is a paint that you normally use 
when you want to paint a wall or doors, furniture, anything a different color than what it is, you need to put primer first because normally what happens is if you just paint it over, the color is not going to come out as the color as you bought. Like if you bought a nice bright blue and you paint it directly over this, it would if you put several coats on it. But if you want to save time and money, the best thing to do is just put a very light coat of primer, 24 hours you wait, and then you paint it to the color you want. And that's it. And what I did, I decided I didn't want to, I didn't want to paint the legs. So I bought a gray sticky paper and I'm going to stick the gray sticky paper on the legs here which I think will look great. And plus, if my leg hits it or a shoe or a chair, it doesn't scuff. So, and it also protects it. So I think that is the better choice to, to do that here. So now let's go to that step with the primer. So everybody, um, normally primer is either like a very light egg color or white. That's what primer lo normally looks like. And when you paint primer onto wood, what I do to suggest is a very light coat. I would not put much. I would put a very light coat on the whole thing. Spread it very well and evenly. I would not put a big cl a clumps of the paint stay on there because if it dries, you'll have the clumps and you'll have the table totally uneven again. You'll have to sand it down. So I just, what I just said, you know, um, take your primer and prime your wood, let it dry for 24 hours. And then once that is dried, then you can put the color that you want to use, doesn't matter. It should not seep through, it should be fine. So once I'm done with this, I will do the painting. I will show you the video first of when I'm done with the priming. And then we can do the next step. So everybody, as you can see, I put a very light coat. You can see um, how thin it is. I'm gonna let that dry best thing to do is for 24 hours and then you can paint the normal paint over it so everybody the primer is dried it's been 24 hours and now I'm going to put normal paint over it I may have to put two coats but that would be no problem the don't you don't need to put too much of a thick coke 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 you don't need to put a thick coat on the paint once you get the whole thing covered um, lightly once don't, like I said if you put too much paint on it one it could crack and two it doesn't look good if you see clumps and it's uneven make sure you put even coats and yeah let's start painting and I will show you the the next step which is putting the stickers on the legs Hi everybody, it's me again. I had just finished painting uh, the top with um, a roller and instead of the brush. I don't like the top how it looks, but once I spray it down with the clear um, spray, it should level out, should look better. And now what I'm going to do is I don't need to paint anymore. So I'm going to put the, my stickers at the wipe down the tables. And once I wipe them down, I will stick my pieces of sticky paper. And what I did is I took the long end of it and measured it and the both parts from the leg here and down is uh, 70 centimeters 
so I, I end up cutting that and um, that long and I measured around it so I don't have to keep wrapping too much it was 13 centimeters so now I cut four pieces to match that side to match it perfectly and now I'm going to stick it on and the best way to do that is if you wipe the, everything clean make sure there's no particles on there no um, lumps or anything because of the fact when you put the paper on you'll see every little uh, mishap that's on there so wipe it down good and then you can stick the paper on but you have to do it gently and slowly or you will get folds and you do not want that and you have to have a hand towel with you if you know how to work with sticky paper and you're putting on a closet because usually people put them inside their kitchen closets and they change them all the time so the bottom doesn't get too dirty and if you know how to do that it's like i said while you're putting it rolling it on you take the paper off slowly and you take a towel and make sure that you you know rub it downwards while you're doing it so that um the paper stays on there and you keep rubbing it all the way around the whole thing until you get it perfect and you do all four legs so i'm going to be doing that now and and if i do any mistakes of course i will show you after i'm done doing everything well if i have any mistakes let's hope not but i will keep it there so when i can videotape you videotape it so you'll see what i'm talking about and yeah so far i think the table looks great the top here you can't really see much where the thing two pieces may not meet so that is a good thing if it still doesn't look great um i may just stick buy a big piece of um clear plastic you know and put it on top so it doesn't scuff or anything at first because usually like i said at the beginning paint needs to sit for a little bit and dry completely before you can put anything on top of it because of the fact that you can make uh, scratches easily in fresh coated paint even if it's been dried for you know one or two days i would wait a little bit or at least put something on top of it before you um decide to do everything so now i'm going to do the legs and we'll see how that looks so everybody here this is what I was talking about. It's perfect. But then on the other leg, this here, this is what I was talking about. If you're not careful in what you're doing, that um, air can get into it and you end up with these folds if you do it too quickly. And the rest of the legs look great. I just need to fix the bottom of it, cut them shorter and then I should have, um, I mean, the other side is perfect. It's just this little area here, but this is what I was talking about. And this is perfect. This here is just a little, what you see here is just from the tape, from the paper. I can just take that off, but it looks great. I think it's better than painting them or spray painting them. So now I, like I said, I'm going to do the top with a clear lac I'm, I'm talking German now with a clear varnish so that it has a little bit of a shine and then my table's done but so I don't want to just leave it like this but so far I think it looks great it's just for me for my room so it matches with my beautiful chair that I have renovated you want to know how to do that please check out the video for that one yeah and that's it that is my video and like I said if you you don't have to put the the varnish on it if you want but I like to put varnish on everything that I paint it helps protects it from wetness if I have a glass of water that's a little bit chilled on top it doesn't cause any damage to the table but since it's newly painted and new sprayed most likely I will use a coaster or have a napkin under it so it does not have too much moisture on the table and plus it'll, it's for my uh, laptop and I don't want to ruin it by knocking over water on it. So that's just a little tip. This is what I did now. I think it looks awesome. And yeah, like I said, the quick tip is, is putting the sticky paper on the legs instead of, um, if they're rounded like this, instead of painting them, 
or you can put ribbon around it. Um, you can also put diamonds all around it if you feel up to it. I have diamond ribbon that I can glue onto it now. Now that um, I covered it with the sticky paper, I can glue anything I want onto the legs. Before you want to glue something on it, I suggest that you either paint it or put something paper over it because um, hot glue does not stick to the legs of um, from these steel legs. It'll just slightly, it'll come off with one little bump. So that's what I just suggest. You can do whatever you want with the legs. I just want a simple table for my laptop and this is what I did with it. So, and you can saw how it looked at first at the beginning of the video, and now this is what it looks like now. I love what I did here. I think it looks awesome. And yeah, that's the end of my video. I hope you like it. Please don't forget to give the thumbs up. And if you haven't subscribed, please do. And um, I wish you a great week. Bye.